Hi everyone, I'm Dolan Duckett and welcome to day two of our yeast fermentation. Today I'm going to be showing you how to feed your yeast and maintain it indefinitely. So let's just get straight to it. For a feed we'll need our yeast culture, spatulas, white whole wheat flour, distilled water, a teaspoon and a tablespoon for measuring, and don't forget our draft free space heated to at least 75 degrees Fahrenheit. But first, let's take a look at our progress. We see we have a successful mixture of flour, sugar, and water coming together in harmony for the chemical reaction we're looking for. And just wait until you open the jar and smell your reward. And for those who are like me with Graves' disease, there are two main beneficial nutrients involved in making your own sourdough or fresh yeast, which are, one, acetic acid. This prevents mold and extends the shelf life of your baking goods. And since it's a byproduct of fermentation, it provides a vinegar-like odor which serves as our flavor. And as it relates to Graves' disease, acetic acid decreases inflammation and aids in muscle weakness. In the second, lactic acid. This helps the body absorb vitamins and minerals. One mineral in particular that's produced is potassium, which is another anti-inflammatory. And since it has probiotic qualities, it can boost gut health, which aids in our frequent bowel movements. Now it's time to feed the baby. We'll start the feeding process by adding two teaspoons of white whole wheat flour to our culture. followed by one tablespoon of our heated distilled water. Then once one of our spatulas will start stirring until everything is fully incorporated. After the first stirring, I saw some dry bits, so I added just another tablespoon of distilled water. Remember, just add a little water at a time to prevent oversaturating your culture. Now clean your spatulas inside the jar. Don't waste any of your hard work. Then close the lid to trap the heat inside, and you're all set. Simple. Now, just for some upkeeping tips, you'll want to stir your culture every 24 hours or at least once a day. This will help in distributing the sugar and flour evenly throughout the culture. And feed your culture every two days. Unlike in the last segment, your mix is successful when you see smooth air pockets forming and a light pillowy like structure showing that it's active. Don't forget to place it back in the proofer or your draft free space with an internal temperature of at least 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's it. In the last segment, we'll go over my maintenance process to keep your culture alive and healthy. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and tell me what you think in the comment section. Until next time, have a good one.